fun with on set or the best relationship with. And if you guys like hung out a lot off the set, like you went to eat or like different things. Yeah. I was the one person who could put Sarah in her place. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't give her an inch. Uh, and I, I, I actually had a lot of fun dissing her. <laughs> I should come up, I got these new chocolate covered raisins, you want one? No. <laughs> whatever, honey. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Because everybody was terrified of her. She was Buffy the Vampire. Uh, so I had a lot of fun messing with her. Uh, my favorite person, though, was uh, Tony Head. Yeah. Uh, he came up to me after the first episode I filmed, and he goes, um, We don't say it like that, you prat. <laughs> I've got, to go home. I've got kids. I've got kids in England now. They're going to make fun of me for the show if you don't get the accent right now. <laughs> so, so he would go. With, he would go uh, through the script with me every episode, line by line, vowel by vowel, <laughs> the first half of the first season, and get that accent right. And he was very particular, <laughs> but very kind, but also didn't kiss my ass at all. No, wrong, wrong. <laughs> James, wake him up, put him on the rail, right? And uh, I, did, I did a gag, so I come to set, and Danny's up on the wire, and he's way up on the wire. He's like, I don't know, 300 feet off the ground, right? And the gag is that Piccolo's standing on a, on a rock face, and he gets sucked into a mafuba. So, so the, the, the gag is that it's supposed to look like you get sucked off the cliff and start spinning down, right? So the first shot of that sequence, you gotta, you gotta propel yourself off the rock face and start spinning on the wire, but you, you, you can't get anything wrong or it's very dangerous. So I'm watching Danny try. Danny, Danny pushes off too much, right? And so he flies out this way and comes crashing back in the rock face and just cheese grates along it. Like they have to clean up the rock face because the costume is like still on the rock face, right? And uh, the director turns to me and goes, your turn. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, oh, whatever. And the thing is, my girlfriend's on the set. And I'm showing off for her, right? So I'm like, yeah, put me up there. <laughs> so I do the gag, and the gag goes fine. We get about three, three takes, and it all goes well. But then I'm, I'm sitting down at the base of the rock face, and the stunt coordinator goes on the walkie-talkie. Goes, well, we got away with that one. <laughs> and I said it really loud so I could hear it, so he would, so, so, because he was telling me, dude, they're making you do stuff that you could get killed over. You know that, right? But I was like, hey, that was fun. Let's do it again. So, hey, I can, hey. Um, have to let you know that I watched nine episodes or seasons of Smallville to, to see your character. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I've been punished. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that 
know the law. Every time I ask in another aspect, if some producer comes up to me and goes, you guys have great chemistry. I'm like, well, yeah, we're, we're both actors. We're both. Um, uh, what did I say about that? Um, actors feed each other. We create the reality that we exist in. So if the actor uh, opposite you is going for all the effects of trying to look cool and not really letting their beautiful, weird self out, then it's a lie, and they're lying to your face every time they call action. But if the actor is being honest and simple and letting those weird stuff out, then it's a gift, and all you gotta do is just react in a normal way. So, um, it's a combination, you know? I don't know what to say about that, because I might brag. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right on. And by the way, Tom Welling, total jerk. <laughs> Just kidding. He's the greatest guy in the world. He really is. I got a man crush on this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. So I just started high school and I wanted to know what you think of like sort of the younger generation rediscovering Buffy. Good. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I remember I re I remember going to the set, and I was just, I was always the nerd on the set, going, "Boy, isn't this great? Isn't this this script is even better than the last one? Let's do it really, let's do it good." And, and, and you know, I remember uh, telling Sarah, "Man, we may go on to multi-million dollar contracts, but we're never going to touch the nerve of the earth right now, like we are right now." And she just looks at me and goes, "Just shut up, I'm tired." <laughs> um, she, she was in every shot. I mean, she was so tired. Uh, yeah, I think I have to do Yeah, I, I, I think frankly, um, I'm very proud to have been on Buffy because I really, I, I've been in like a hundred plays and I, I used to produce theater and I'm just good enough to know that that was tight. Like that writing was excellent. And I fully, as we were filming it, fully expected it to last forever. I, I never, as soon as I saw the, First script, I was like, "This is going to last forever. I, I, I don't care. This is, we're going to say honeymooners. What, what's the honeymooners?" Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, James. My name's Hugo. Hey, Hugo. And I was thinking about Spike's character, and I think Spike and Willow really had, for me, the best progression of her. They went through the most in the show. Yeah. And I was thinking about you said you were just still this dog in the beginning, and then to me, you became this lost boy who wanted to pretend to be bad, and you were growing up people. But then, how did you feel when you read that in the script that? That rape scene with Buffy in the, in the tub, that was so upsetting. I, just, I was just wondering what you thought and how you reacted when you first heard about it. Uh, yeah, I almost committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs> no, For real? Seriously, yeah. Um, I remember going up to Steve tonight, who wrote that episode, uh, the day we were filming it, and I was shaking. And I just said, dude, you don't really realize what you make us do sometimes. Sometimes you write this shit and you don't understand what it takes to be a human being and go through it. Um, and I remember being on the, on, the, on, on the concrete and just thinking, if I bash my head against the concrete floor hard enough, I can fly through the concrete and fly away from the situation. It was the absolute worst day of my life. Um, and I, I can't watch it. In fact, I, I, because of that episode, I still don't watch Buffy because it was so painful. Uh, but it got me into therapy. <laughs> Thank God. And my girlfriend's happy about that one. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. Wow, that was serious. <laughs> Can we have one more funny question? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great experience no, for me. No. But I don't want to let anyone think that yeah. Buffy wasn't an amazing experience because it really was. But go ahead. It may be a spoiler, she may say no, but will we see you again on Hawaii 5-0? My love, <laughs> I shoot McGarrett's dad in the face. Yes. Don't you think I want to come back? <laughs> time McGarrett thinks he found the bad guy at the end of the episode, Mr. Hare finds out that, oh, it was not this guy. This guy just works for Mr. Magoo. It's Mr. Magoo again. I'm Mr. Magoo. So uh, you're not going to see me uh, um, uh, every episode. I may be in two or three a year. 
something like that, but I'm always the bad guy. I'm Mr. Bad. <laughs> Thank you guys for giving us an awesome. I want to see you around.